Today, we're talking about boundaries, creates independence and self-efficacy. You have to stand up for your time. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily. I am a certified health coach and a full-time business mentor for online coaches. I'm so glad you're here. Today, we're talking about boundaries. Guys, before we dive into the video, if you wouldn't mind just taking two seconds and hitting that subscribe button down below, it really supports my channel and shows me that you guys like viewing educational content on this platform. I also really, really look at the videos that you guys like. If you would hit like on this video, if you like these types of like sit down educational videos, I look at those analytics and I try to create more videos along the lines of what y'all prefer. So please hit subscribe if you want to show me <laughs> that you like the channel. And if you're an OG, hit subscribe and like this video if you like this video. Now, let's get into it. I literally completely changed my entire life and my entire business for the better like you have no idea how much for the better. When I set boundaries around my time, specifically when I learned to set boundaries with my clients that both benefited myself and benefited them. And I wanna talk you guys through that process so that you don't become the burnt out, resentful coach that I see so many coaches becoming the longer they stick around in the coaching industry. Now, if you are a brand new coach in the online service-based business space, you might be thinking like, what are you talking about? I like have no need for boundaries. I don't even have clients yet. And I want to tell you that that's, that's actually the best time to be watching this video because if I had seen something like this early on in my business, I would not have found myself in the same <laughs> sticky situation um, mentally that I found myself in probably about six months ago. And I really wanted to talk you guys through how I changed everything for the better in my life and business by creating boundaries. Now, Boundaries are important in all areas of life, and I've definitely learned that as I've gotten older. I think we start out in business saying yes to everything, and we start out in self-employment, potentially thinking like, okay, now that I'm self-employed, I can literally do everything. I'm always available, like yada, yada, yada. And maybe we're just a people pleaser, right? Maybe we're just people pleasers and pleasing other people and having really like inconsistent and loose boundaries is a problem that we have. But it is first and foremost a problem. And recognizing a lack of boundaries as that is important because if you're going to be a strong business owner, a lack of boundaries will be the first thing that makes you crumble because people will take advantage of your time. You will not have access to your time in the way that you need to actually recharge, to be the best version of yourself you can be, to help other people. It is the definition of forcing yourself to pour from an empty cup when you don't have boundaries. I'm going to go back to my OG video style and break this video down into three parts. You guys can skip around if you need to. We'll add some timestamps, okay? First things first, I'm going to talk about my experience with my like lack of boundaries in my personal business and my experience now that I feel like I've fully changed everything about the way that I set and maintain boundaries. I'd highly recommend any business owner listen to that portion of the video. But if you're here for the strategy, part two of today's video is going to be all about the benefits of having boundaries when it comes to your clients. Because in reality, I really, really care about my clients and I know that it can feel sometimes like it's me, me, me. I need to have boundaries for me and this and that. You don't realize the negative effects that a lack of boundaries, my cat is, oh my God, Steve, please. We don't realize as coaches the negative impact that a lack of boundaries has on our clients. And so I'm going to be spending some time talking about the negative impacts that I was seeing when I created like basically codependent relationships with my clients and the positivity that I've seen come out of me having more structured boundaries. And it's been major, like there have been like major financial abundance and success abundance impacts when it comes to my clients. And I think it's pretty cool. And then the third piece of the video is going to be talking about actual strategies to set boundaries. Again, if you're a new business owner, this is going to be amazing because you can set the right boundaries right from the get go. Uh, but if you're an established business owner and you're looking to really like create some space for yourself and some independence among your clients, which I highly recommend, as I said, that's going to be the strategic section for you. Okay, so let's dive into my personal journey with boundaries. I just want to say it just started torrentially pouring rain outside so if you can hear a small pitter patter that would be the weather and it just started so we're just going to keep going because I'm excited to talk about this message so 
uh, in my business, I really started out by feeling like the more I was available, the better things would go. The more available I was for everybody all the time, the better. And I just operated like that. And what that meant in my business is that literally from day one, I was like marketing on the fact that I was available all the time. Like you could message me and like technically my hours on my messenger app were like eight in the morning till 7 p.m., which is still insane. But I would still check my phone outside of that. So like as soon as I opened my eyes in the morning, I would start feeling guilty that I hadn't gone on my phone, even if I hadn't even like brushed my teeth yet or like had coffee or had a workout. I was feeling the need to be on my phone. And the same thing applied in the evening. Like I would be having dinner with my family and immediately I'm feeling guilty. Even if it's 8.30 at night and we're all drinking a glass of wine, I'm like, I need to be checking my phone. You can imagine the level of codependency between me and my cell phone that that environment created. You wanna talk about being glued to your phone. That was crazy. And it was not healthy and it generated a ton of anxiety in me because I felt like I could never set my phone down. Like I couldn't even go on a walk without my phone because I was like, if somebody needs me, you know, I I'm, I need to be there. So fast forward to about like six months ago, I was traveling in Europe and I it was it was a hard time. Like I was traveling for like three plus months and working on central time, but over in Europe, so working really late nights. And I was just realizing like, this is not sustainable. And I started, because I went through a hard time mentally, I really just started taking my life back. I started taking accountability, realizing that nobody was gonna come save me. Like if I was gonna let myself burn out and become resentful towards my business, that was gonna be my problem when I wanted to quit everything. Like nobody was gonna come and, and have an intervention for me. Not even my husband could do that because it's my business. I have to make those decisions. So I made a lot of empowered but scary decisions to cut back on my availability. I wanted to be more predictably available for my clients and to have more space to have a normal life because as you can imagine, it's not a normal life when you're glued to your cell phone all the time. I have been, I've, I checked my phone, like my business phone, on my honeymoon, I'm embarrassed to say that, I would check my phone um, on the weekends if I saw a notification come through that looked like it was like urgent or an emergency, and we'll talk about emergencies in a second. I would like open that message and feel like I needed to respond. I have been, I remember being at a friend's wedding at her, at her dinner, um, her rehearsal dinner the night before her wedding and going outside and standing outside in the snow in like my little wedding dress or outfit and sending voice memos to my clients like super late at night on a Friday night. And my client shouldn't have even been working at that time. I definitely shouldn't have been. I was setting a horrible example doing that. But again, I thought that I had to do that to be successful. Let me be like that big sister energy to you right now, that voice of reason, the wisdom of having done this for a few years and just tell you that that is not helpful. It doesn't help in business. It doesn't help your clients. It just hurts you and it makes everything harder. So for me, what I ended up doing was I just hit a breaking point one week and I decided like, I'm, I can't do this anymore. I love my clients too much to give them an exhausted, just like sad, depressed version of myself because I don't ever have a second for myself. And so what came out of that was deciding that rather than being available all the time, I was gonna be available for office hours. That's what worked for me. We'll talk about this more in the strategy portion of the video. But for me, it ended up working to only be available for a portion of the day that was predictable. I was always gonna be available during that time to go back and forth, but it also meant that my clients could message me whenever. And it was so scary for me to send out this message to my clients thinking that they were going to be like, what the heck? Like, I this isn't what I signed up for. She said she'd be available at all hours. And I'm not gonna lie to you, literally every single response that I got back was positive. And I had several, like more than five of my clients message me directly and say, hey, I'm so glad that you're doing this. Like you just gave me permission to have boundaries with my clients and you doing this makes it so much easier to communicate with you because they were no longer worried about messaging me late at night. They knew that I wasn't going to answer. They were like, I'm not bothering her. I just want this answered by tomorrow. 
so they were able to be up like nursing their baby and sending me a message and not worrying about it. They also knew when they were going to get a response because before, if I'm available all day, but I have a four hour call block, people are like, did you die? Like, who, where are you? Whereas now people know they're like, she responds during this time. There's no question. It's one less stressor on my clients in general. So I don't want to make this too long. That's my story with like boundary setting and it completely changed my life. I have my relationship with my husband is better. I have spent so much more time with friends. I have a much more full life. I have other opportunities. I'm making more money. It's just been amazing. And my clients, most importantly, are thriving more than ever because they are independent and they trust themselves, which leads me to part two of the video talking about the benefits for your clients and for you of having really clear boundaries. So segueing right over from that last point I was just mentioning, number one reason why this is beneficial is because it creates independence and self-efficacy in your clients. Now, if you guys have not heard of self-efficacy, this is something that's talked about a lot in health coaching programs. It was talked about a lot in my personal certification that I went through. Self-efficacy just means trust in yourself. It's you believing, I got this, I can do this, I trust myself to be able to follow through. When you are available, at all times for your clients or for anybody in your life, they do not trust themselves to do anything because they don't have to. They just run to you. They just ask you. There's literally no need for them to be independent. They don't feel like they can make decisions. There's a lot of insecurity that develops because there's a constant environment of second guessing, of questioning, and of seeking external validation. When you create boundaries, you build independent clients that are able to make decisions. And it's extraordinary, honestly, to see the difference in the women that I work with because they all are so independent. They have a question and they figure it out. Sometimes they ask me and then they message me later, hey, I actually figured it out because I sat here for five minutes and looked into it. Then they have that pride about it. And it's just been the coolest thing to see. The second portion of the benefits section here might be the most important thing that I say in this whole video, but having boundaries mean that your clients are going to have realistic expectations for you. If you are available all the time and you have no boundaries around your time, your emotions, your availability, anything, there's going to be an unrealistic expectation that you are are the person making the changes. When in reality, whether it's in someone's health, in their business, in their life, whatever it is, their mindset, you are not the one making the changes as the coach. You're guiding them along their journey to make changes, but they're the one who has to do it. They're the one who has to follow the strategy, who has to be consistent. And if there's going to be a major change, like they're the only one really walking in their shoes. And if you have no boundaries, it comes across as though you are going to be the one making the changes. And that creates a ton of dissatisfaction in your client base. They're like, this isn't working. You're not fixing it. You're not doing it, this, that, and the other, when that's really not your job. That is the job of a successful client. But if there's no boundaries, like how, how are they to know? And then benefit number three for you. And when you're happier, your clients are happier. So this is for your clients too. You get your life back. Like I've been saying this whole video, I got my life back when I stopped being available all the time. And that means I am a more energized, more articulate, thoughtful, intelligent person when I am communicating with my clients. If you're available at all hours of the day and the night at all times, it is extremely hard to always be on point with your responses and with your energy and you're passing any negative energy off onto your clients in those cases. And really that's not fair to them. Take your life back. You're allowed to have a normal life, even though you're self-employed. Yes, you're going to work harder as a self-employed person than you probably ever work at a normal job, a normal job, um, but you're going to love it. Obviously, it is hard work. But that doesn't mean that you have to work 24-7. And for probably a year and a half to two years of my business, I didn't let myself live like a normal life. And I really impart upon my clients and hopefully to you guys as well that you deserve to have a life that you can enjoy as well and not be getting like jerked around by everybody that is a client of yours or anybody in life at all. Take control. And people respect you more for that and results that your clients have will be stronger because of it. All right, heading into part three of this video, strategies for creating boundaries 
First things first, you got to be extremely clear. No matter what type of boundaries you're creating, which I'll go through a couple kinds that I think are really important, you have to be very, very clear about things from the get-go. It is not a good look to go back and change your mind, you know, mid-program with a client that all of a sudden you have these new boundaries. It's better than not doing it at all, but wouldn't it be easier to just set that standard from the beginning and be super confident in that? Like I said, when I started out a new round of mentorship and I, you know, told my clients, this is how things are going to be. Not only did nobody question me, I was very, very clear about what was happening and why it was going to be a positive and people praised me for it. And they have expressed their own positive experience, you know, as part of, of that experiment. I encourage you to be very, very clear and upfront about your boundaries. So there is no gray area. So my first specific like strategy here is you need to have very, very clear boundaries around your time. So for example, I have very clear boundaries around when in the week I schedule client calls and when I do not, because when I schedule outside of that, I know I travel a lot. My energy is not at a place where I can be of the most service. And overall, it is just not the most beneficial experience for my clients or for myself. And I'm very clear about that up front. And I think it's very important that you be that way too, because you give people an inch, they'll take a mile, even if they love you, even if they're your client that's obsessed with you. You cannot assume that other people are going to stand up for your time. You have to stand up for your time. The second thing here, which is basically what I've been talking about all video is very clear between session availability. So whether this is with clients or even like using the DMs, whenever you're not on a call with someone, if you have the opportunity for them to contact you, which technically we all have that through the DMs on Instagram or any social media platform, you need to be very clear about when you answer messages with your clients. Like my clients know there's a specific window in the day where I answer messages. They can message me any time of the day or night. I'm going to see it during that time. And if they want to go back and forth, that's when they're going to message me at the beginning of that time window. And I maintain those boundaries as pristinely as I can, because you have to be the example. You have to maintain that clarity. But even like in the DMs, just because you have DMs in your inbox, does that mean you have to answer them right this second? Does that mean you have to be in back and forth conversation all day long? No. Set a standard for yourself and make it known publicly, if needed, what your boundaries are because it will literally just change the entire way you live your life. So you guys, I hope this video was helpful. I know it was a little bit of a longer one potentially, but I feel obviously really strongly about this topic. I almost feel like this could be a podcast episode at some point talking about how I've changed my life through boundaries. And I have actually recorded a few episodes that touch on that. So definitely check out the first million podcast if you want to hear more about my journey and the way that I have made improvements in my own life and business that have really benefited my clients and me. But you guys make sure you hit subscribe. If you guys don't mind taking just two seconds, hitting that subscribe button, it helps me so much to know that this is a viable educational platform to continue producing content on. And when you like specific videos, it just shows me that you like that kind of content and it helps me to create more of it. I really do look at those analytics. And as always, I really hope that you're doing something today or tonight, wherever you are at for yourself in your business, you are in charge of your own success. Start creating it. Take back your time, take control of your goals and start making it happen. And I am so glad you guys were able to join me here today for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Mwah.